Next, we will hear from the second candidate in this race, Mark Martinson. Mr. Martinson, your opening statement, please. Hello, my name is Mark Martinson. I've lived in the state of Alaska for uh, more than 40 years, spending a lot of time in Anchorage and Fairbanks and some other communities. And uh, in that time, I've uh, noticed a change from Alaskans being energy conservation experts to kind of energy consumption uh, idiots. And I think uh, Anchorage is the biggest city in the state should lead the way in conserving energy rather than wasting energy. I think there's a lot of public buildings we can uh, insulate a little better and uh, beef up our mass transit center to make it so we don't have to rely on automobiles to get around this city of Anchorage. Thank you. Uh, I was going to ask you where you would focus your energy as a newly elected member of the assembly, but that's pretty clear from your first, from your opening statement, but are there other issues that you'd like to engage uh, if given the opportunity as a member of the assembly? Yes, I've also seen some changes uh, where we seem to have a, a line and then was, you know, for and against and, the, and them versus us. And I'd like to uh, get us all together in this idea. We're all in this mess together on the planet here. And, uh, and I really get away from so much machines and into the humans. I think we should have a stable economy here in Anchorage based on, you know, a fair amount of work for a fair amount of pay rather than just putting all our monies into uh, other buildings that may not conserve energy and other software that may not be needed for our computers. When you talk to voters around this community, what's on their mind at this election season? Uh, many of the people I talk to in the downtown district are uh, dissatisfied with the uh, reducing the amount of uh, people in our workforce. Um, both the public uh, police department and the public transit system seems to be getting much money for buildings, but not very much money for more people. And so, yeah, I'd like to see a, a turn to more humans and fewer machines. Okay, <clears throat> the dispute over uh, the Sullivan uh, administration's revision of the labor law has dominated assembly news for a year now. Um, did you support the changes in the labor laws? If so, why? If not, why not? No, I don't support the, uh, the changes. Uh, in my experience with the city, I think we had a good workforce and I think people rely on their jobs. They want job stability rather than wondering what's going <clears> to <throat> happen the next year. And so uh, that's what I would, would address. Now, the, uh, the referendum on the Sullivan labor law uh, is not going to be held in the spring election. It will be held in the November election. Uh, do you support moving it to November or would you, oppo did you, would you oppose it? Did you oppose it? I would have preferred to have it early enough just so we could uh, get this resolved early enough. Um, many times the delay tactic just does that. It just, you know, delays the inevitable and maybe makes uh, more power for the advertising field. How do you feel about moving our entire municipal election in, <clears throat> into the fall in a couple of years, 2017, I believe it is. Is that a good idea, something you could support or would you prefer to keep it also in the spring? I guess I'd have to look at the statistics. I've heard that it may be a better voter turnout in different times of the year versus other times of the year. Um, the spring, it depends on, on who's fishing, what kind of activity is going on. Um, so yeah, without more information, I couldn't say really. Okay, <clears throat> the expansion rebuild of the Port of Anchorage seems to be an endless source of tribulation. Uh, there are charges of money wasted, delays, and there have been many, many pointed fingers, as you know. This has become very messy and very difficult. And it's going to cost money to clean up. What is to be done? Well, I think uh, the initial problem um, was the design. As a groundwater geologist and hydrologist, I'm a little bit familiar with the hydrologic regime of Cook Inlet. It's a very dynamic area, and uh, it's pretty hard to just put a plain vanilla project in a dynamic energy situation like that. And so I think the original design is flawed and once again, um, without seeing the details of how it's being redesigned, um, I can't say other than I know the, the problems are related to that very dynamic regime. In, the, in, the in your on. judgment, what is Anchorage's number one transportation priority? Well, we have some serious traffic problems in this town, um, and I think they can be alleviated by improving the mass transit. And I'm not talking about another new building, but I mean more buses, 
more frequent buses with more drivers. Um, the other big issue is maintenance of our public buildings. Um, between that, um, we have a lot to go. Well, tell us about maintenance of the public buildings. If, if we're doing something uh, wrong or we're not making the right decisions here, what should we be doing? Well, I think one of the, uh, the decisions, I don't know if it's been made already, is uh, regarding the heated sidewalks of downtown Anchorage. I think that's a uh, classic example of, uh, you know, transferring manpower to petroleum power. So instead of shoveling it with, with human power, we're using petroleum, and I think it's a bad idea. <clears throat> I don't know if they've shut it off, um, but we seem to be going toward the direction of more consumption is better, and it turns out maybe maybe not. And so I'd like to see, you know, I'd like to see us insulate our public buildings before we make any new ones. Uh, when I took Arctic Engineering, they had an example at UAF of the, of the commons with a glass roof and saying how bad that was an idea, and yet we still do it. Uh, glass roofs, glass walls. What are some of the things Arctic Engineering taught you that you believe should be done in Anchorage to improve our quality of life? Uh, insulate our roofs. Um, you can drive down the street without having an engineering degree and look at the icicles pouring off roofs to know, you know, which buildings need some help. Um, and I think it'll just by cutting down the cost of utilities in this town, I think people will, will want to stay. I read a letter to the editor the other day about people's, a, a, a person, excuse me, uh, individual saying that he would gladly pay a little more if it meant that we would shovel the side. Don't we have all kinds of programs to re-insulate your homes, retrofit your homes? Haven't we put a lot of state money and number of state projects to try and do that? Yes, we have but they have been only partially successful, haven't been well, successful. Well, public buildings are exempt from that, it turns out. And so mm -hmm. if you have an architect who decides to have a glass entryway or a glass roof, it doesn't matter how many architect engineers are telling him not to do it, they will do it anyway. And so at this point, I think we should address the public buildings <clears throat> and leave it up to the state to insulate the houses. Okay. Alcohol continues to be involved in a disproportionate percentage of crime and disorder here in Anchorage. What can be done to reduce the damage alcohol does to our community? Well, that is a big problem. Uh, oftentimes, I think our police department has been uh, relegated to just uh, agents of the alcohol industry to herd them home after they get done in the bars, and we have a lot of effort to expand the open hours. I think we have to have a very public police presence downtown and uh, really cut back on the drinking. Well, in that, in that case, and I guess how? we, we right. could ask that <laughs> drunk driving is a national problem. It's a state problem. It's also a local municipal problem. Uh, following up on, uh, on what we're just talking about, what can be done about drunk driving that isn't being done at the present time here in Anchorage? Well, here in Anchorage, they do have the program where they will give, give the individual a ride home, a uh, cab ride, and you can leave your car and the keys, you know, and, and I think that that's very great. Another thing would be uh, extended buses where you don't have to go through the process of getting a, whatever you do to do that, get registered. And, and I'm all for it. I think the bar owners are all for it. Um, it's just how do you get the individual to not imbibe so much. So well, isn't the problem the that it, they, they're imbibing, but they insist on driving after they've been doing it or while they're doing it? Well, that's our, our society is very car conscious. This community is very car conscious. The city is built for cars, not humans. And so, and that's what's happening. Uh, you know, we don't want to burden someone else by getting home. You know, now we think we're this independent person that can just take care of oneself. Okay, the number of street people fluctuates here in Anchorage, but uh, the street people who are homeless are a permanent part of our community. How can we reduce the number and the friction between street people and the rest of the community? That is a very big problem in Anchorage. Um, I've, I'm familiar with some other uh, countries that have tried other methods. Uh, one of them is to give them a place to live, um, which we're trying right now. Uh, the caveat of that is you have to have them uh, not drink so much. And so what they've found out in these other countries is if they have a place they can call their own, then that is a reason to cut back on their drinking. And I think that's, that's I think there have the been some ex experiments in American cities as well. Denver is right. one place that's been mentioned where they've tried this kind of thing with some of the success of what you're talking about, I believe. 
Right, and it's, you know, it's a mixed success. It depends on the individual. People are very complicated uh, as opposed to, you know, machines or software. And, um, yeah, they have to feel like they're a part of the community. Right now, it's, um, they sometimes don't feel like that, and many of us don't feel that way either. What do you like best about Anchorage? <laughs> the looming mountains in the background. <laughs> I lived in Fairbanks for a while, and I didn't really know I missed them until I moved back here. And I'm like, well, they are right The hills here, in Fairbanks they? are not big enough for well, you? Well, they're just far away. <laughs> they're, they're there, but uh, a little further away. Anything else you'd like to talk about the quality of life oh, here? <clears throat> well, I like the people here. I like, I like the variety of, uh, of ethnic groups in, in Anchorage and Alaska in general, really. Um, I spent some time in the Aleutians, and that was one of the refreshing aspects of the community, I think, is just the variety and, and the acceptance of it. What kind of work do you do at the present time? Uh, right now I teach at the University of uh, Alaska, Anchorage. And you teach? Uh, chemistry laboratory, inorganic chemistry laboratory. And the, who, these are students who are meeting a chemistry requirement. They're studying to be doctors. <laughs> they want to be chemical engineers. Mm, uh, all of that, yeah. Usually that's, that's the, uh, the reason, nursing program, to fulfill a, a requirement for their degree program uh, primarily. And how long have you been doing that? Uh, about 10 years. Oh, really? And um, <clears throat> uh, going back to the question about Anchorage, what would you like to change about Anchorage? You've indicated some things here that, for example, transportation, but are there other things, uh, if you got to be czar for a day, you might want to <laughs> alter. We can give you 36 hours on the czar <laughs> front. Well, I've, I've, I was looking at it today when I was taking the bus to work and, uh, and noticed that it, it is very hard to cross some streets in this, in this city if you're on foot. Um, Especially after a big snowstorm like Saturday. <laughs> right, everybody w walked in the street. Um, yeah, so I, I'd like to see a little more interconnectivity with the bicycle paths and the footpaths. Um, I think there's some opportunities to really change the, the way bikes flow through town without impeding cars so much, and I realize they're a big part of the society. Uh, Anchorage, Anchorage municipal elections are nominally nonpartisan, but are they really nonpartisan? Uh, I think it depends on where the funding comes from, where you may find out that they aren't. And how much so money much do you intend to spend on this campaign? Or? Uh, zero. None. Okay. Um, you're sure of that? Well, I don't know. If I get some contributions, I may have to do an ad or two. I, I may, may put a home. The out-of-pocket out expense of coming over here, the television <laughs> studio. Okay. Um, if you visit our libraries, you will find them crowded. But are we appropriating enough money, providing enough resources for the needs of libraries and their patrons? Boy, that's a good question. I saw an uh, article in the paper about the new libraries don't, uh, don't have books because <laughs> they're all online. And, and I think that indicates the, you know, our reliance on technology more and more. And uh, I think that's part of the overall problem in worldwide, countrywide, statewide, citywide, if you look at that. Uh, we do rely a lot on technology. Now, some people might watch this show and say, We are on technology. Either I'm, I'm in favor <laughs> of it or I'm against it. This is the Luddite character. Yeah, How there you go. There you go. Very good appropriate term. Um, I've worked in, in water and sewer projects in, in rural Alaska a lot and, uh, and lived in rural communities. And it always seems like there's always enough money to find for the, for the new computers that are coming out, and then the old computers go home in the, in the cars of the teachers or wherever they go. And so it seems to be no problem finding more computers. It's stressed at the, at the college. Everybody should have a laptop and be wired 24-7. And I'm not sure if that teaches us to think or just teaches us to and We should emphasize here a note that you are a, you are a man of science. You would just apply it differently than it's being applied right now. Is that a fair way to put it? Yes, I think there's some technology that we can use, but I think we're getting uh, a little caught up in it. Um, like I say, I think we should pay as much for humans, even if they get sick and can't go to work. Okay, and all that. we got about 45 seconds here. Uh, totally different subject. There have been a number of police shootings over the last year, and many people are, are, are upset about them. Police shooting citizens in various mm -hmm. different activities, some of them crimes. What do you make of that? Uh, I think it's the same with a lot of our other employees. The police have a, a, a rough um, workload to, to face, and especially when they're uh, being cut, cut back with humans. I think we should have a presence on the street. I think we should use community policing as much as we can, which means the police officer has to talk to the community. And it's hard to do if we don't have enough peop uh, people to, to talk to them. Um, we're going to have oh, yeah. to leave it right there. Thank you very much, Mr. Martinson. 
After the break, we'll be right back with candidates from Eagle River. 